Hi, I'm Nikki Kaminga and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these gorgeous hand-stamped washers. This one I've just made hand-stamped with the letters M-U-M, -M, Mum. This washer comes either flat or pre-domed. Uh, the one we're using today in this tutorial is flat so you buy it like this and then you prep it as i'm showing as i'm showing you both options come already stamped they're stamped 935 which is a slightly better alternative to 925 it's it can still be sold as sterling silver but it's got one percent more one percent more silver in it a bit less copper it's known as an anti-tarnish silver and i find it a bit easier to work with and it's slightly brighter silver so yes yeah, already stamped 935 and today i'm just going to show you how to dome one of the washers if you are um having your washers laser engraved or etched then you can buy them pre-domed um there's a small extra charge for that because i'll be doing the doming for you um but if you are stamping then you need to buy them flat so thanks for watching and here's the tutorial pause if you need to to have a look at all of these supplies that i'm using today this is how the washer comes it's got a hole big enough for a Pandora or Camellia style European bracelet and once domed it'll fit beautifully around this bead. This is a medium sized bead from one of our moulds. Uh, that one's got normal inserts but the bead cores work too. This is a wooden doming block and the brass or bronze uh, doming block from the metal set that I've got. You will need both. You'll need hand stamped i've got the heart and the letters m and u they are uh, 1.5 millimeter capital letter stamps that i'm using today first of all we're going to protect the silver before we anneal it i've got here methylated spirits with boric acid please be super careful learn about ppe and protection fire safety before you start and don't touch it when it's hot please <laughs> Uh, I'm just putting this on both sides and lighting it to burn away the alcohol and then there is a boric acid sort of coating left on the silver that will prevent fire scale. Fire scale is where it gets um, sort of bad colour. Now I'm heating it with a brunette torch, it's like a kitchen torch, they're great, until it's about cherry red and then I stop. Now with sterling silver, you can pop it straight into cold water. This is called quenching. With argentium silver, it's better to let it sit and cool down naturally before you quench it. So I'm just in a hurry here. Uh, probably shouldn't, but I'm just gonna blow it a bit. It can make the silver on, you know, little dainty rings, um, a little tiny bit brittle if you quench it from you know red hot so it's not a great idea but you know this one will probably be okay uh, while it's cooling down I'm gonna prepare the message that I want to stamp on here if you're stamping blanks or you know ring shank lengths uh, it, and you're doing a long message it's really really good to write it out first uh, in case you forget in case you get the wrong letters um, but I'm just showing you how I would normally do it. I've got the Impress Art um, stickers there. They're great for doing ring bands. Now, I've put this in cold water. As soon as it's gone in the cold water, you can touch it immediately. Dry it off nicely. And now I'm going to write where I want to do my stamping. So I've just got an ultra fine Sharpie. And we do sell the Sharpies. We sell quite a few of the supplies I'm using today on the website and I'm also going to do a blog so if you look on keepsake supplies look at the recent blogs you will see all of this written out so if you prefer to follow that way um, there's also a translatable um, tutorial there I'm going to write it all out and you can have it in any language any format uh, so I've just written mum and I've decided to put a heart either side of the word okay so make sure that you've got your stamps your letter stamps ready before you start 
and uh, I'm going to start off with the middle letter, which is U, and I use this technique to make sure that I've got it the right way up, otherwise it's going to look like an N. Um, so practice on a bit of copper first or an aluminium stamping blank until you're quite confident because I've only done it a couple of times, but when you're stamping silver and you make a mistake, it's heartbreaking. I personally would never stamp solid gold. Uh, real silver is about as far as I'd go. Hmm. I do know people who stamp gold filled. I personally wouldn't because I would worry that it would affect the layer of gold um, and affect the bond with the base metal underneath. But you can if you want to. Try it out. I've seen some issues around with people doing that, but it's up to you. I don't currently offer these domed washers in gold filled, but if you'd like them, please let me know. Now I've got the M, and again, make sure it's the right way up so you don't stamp a W. My hand stamping is probably atrocious. I was bullied in a hand stamping group once for my stamping. It was a piece that I'd done for free for a client because I was still learning and the client had sent a photo of it because she was appalled. So even if it's free, please point out to the client, you know, that you are learning or this is the way they look. Um, I was quite knocked by that incident and it's part of the reason I started um, looking for engravers and I'm so super happy with the laser engravers that we use now and that is a service that I can offer on any of our pieces. So if you'd like one of these pre-domed and laser engraved, just let me know um, and we can book that one for you. Now that I've done the stamping, I'm just using this um, foam sanding pad. It's like a microphone one. I can't remember off the top of my head what grit it is. I think it's something like uh, 2,500 but now I'm gonna start doming so I'm gonna use the widest here on my wooden doming block and place this nice nicely annealed thing in there and I'm gonna choose the the most shallow like the widest wooden dome up here and I'm hitting hitting in the middle and then I'm moving down to the next, um, so the next smallest doming hole <laughs> uh, or depression in this doming block. So I'm getting gradually smaller. And so the dome is getting gradually higher each time I flip it around. Now, eventually the silver is gonna get quite hard. You can see it's starting to bend here. And once it becomes a little bit more difficult to, um, to dome that's when I would like to anneal it again so you're gonna see me do that in a second here we are so that's gone right down to the smallest here in my wooden doming block and next uh, you can see it's starting to take shape but I want to dome it a bit more I want it to sit nicely around that bead I'm moving on to the slightly more curved and doming punch. There. This is the actual wooden doming block that I use to fit the bead cores when I do the part A, part B beads, just in case anyone's interested. So I've had this wooden doming block for seven years and it has really lasted me well. So it's, I think, a good investment. So no, now more of that um, boric acid and methylated spirits. Again, please be super careful with chemicals. Um, don't do this around children or pets. Oh, try and keep cats out of the room and dogs if possible when working with silver or you know, doing anything with a blowtorch and make sure you've got your fire extinguisher close to hand. Right now I'm heating it up again and we're going for what is always called cheap. and we're definitely not gonna pick it up while it's hot. Now, most of the time I will anneal and then I will quench and then I'll pickle. Now pickling is where you put pieces into sort of warm acid bath. I use citric acid with a pinch of salt. I don't measure it. Um, just behind the blowtorch there, I've got my um, pickle pot, which is actually just a small slow cooker. 